so in today's book we are going to study two main topics okay two main topics and those are data science and machine learning actually both of them are interrelated but in order to study machine learning you should know data science very well before that you can you cannot do anything so first of all we will see what are we going to study in data science so actually the usual data science can be done with two languages one is python language and the second is r language so may i know how many of you are familiar with these two languages or any one of them sir i know by uh, basic of python language okay okay good and anyone else i am also familiar with python yes sir okay okay nice yes yeah. sir python only okay nice actually i just we have one more student here and it's like yes munmai can you introduce yourself yes uh, my name is kurunmai narendra kashyape and i am from it department dy patel college of engineering third year okay next nice. so here we are discussing about the uh, curriculum syllabus that we are going to study today so actually we have two languages in, in order to study data science python and r but we are going to start with because in our language it contains the different approach to study data science and in python it is quite comparatively easy to study data science so in python we are going to study two steps first is the basis of python and then the libraries which are going to use in order to build a data science model so in the basics we have fundamentals the basic structure of the language how the structure is going to be the indentation and all the following things that we are going to study and the data types which means uh, you might have also studied in data structure that we have list queue stack different things so that in fact and we have a mainly four data types list and many more that we are going to study in the first classes and in the most important some of the things are that which we use for the calculation part the logical statement which we use for yes or no which means it is yes then it will follow several steps and if it is no then it will follow other several steps that we are going to study in the basics as uh, some of you know the basics then it will be uh, a revision type of for all of you then in the library part we are going to study mainly for libraries numpy pandas matplotlib and sql other plotlib and many more are there but in order to just kick start your journey you must need this four study libraries numpy pandas matplotlib and sql other can be learned later but in order to start you must know the starting four libraries this is the uh, curriculum for the data science that we are going to study now when it comes to machine learning once we get master this skills then we start machine learning it will be easy for you if you directly start machine learning then it will be very difficult for you in the machine learning we are going to know the differences between supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning actually in market uh, market standard we will mostly use supervised and uh, unsupervised reinforcement learning can be used for advanced systems currently uh, students like us and the working professionals they use very endless amount so in the supervised learning we are going to see two types there are two types of supervised learning first is classification and second is regression classification means let's see the two examples so here are the two examples fraud detection and image classification classification means uh, fraud detection if a fraud is happen then it is yes or no then classify yes or no uh, whenever you see the classification yes or no it can be called as classification supervised learning and image classification means if you give me 100 of images then we have to classify for example if if you give me 
and it's not limited between dog and cat. We have to classify this is the dog and this is the cat. Classification. This two type of classifications. So in the regression part, we have to. For example, we have risk assessment and score prediction. Regression means or LD. In the classification, we have to answer two questions: it is yes or it is no. And in the regression, we have to find a value, certain value. For example, in the score prediction, for example, if a cricket match is going on, we have to predict the score. What will be the score till the first innings? Then it is we will get a certain value. For example, if we give one eighty, one seventy, one ninety, this is a certain value that we are getting. So in terms of if we get a value, then it is called as regression model. If we get a yes or no, it is called as a classification model. Okay, so. If you have any doubts, you can unmute yourself and directly ask. I will answer all the questions. Yes, anyone have any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, so uh, I I want to share something. So in the end of the session, we are going to discuss the roadmap. The roadmap to take in order to become a data scientist or a machine learning engineer. The roadmap we are discussing, and in the end, we are going to distribute the project assignments for you to complete the internship. So uh, if you if you start att attending the from the starting, then it, you will get the complete knowledge of it. So please don't skip the lecture, okay? So in the machine learning part, we have discussed about the supervised learning. So mostly we are, I mean, seventy to eighty percent market standard is working on supervised learning. Unsupervised and and reinforcement learning are very less because they are very high level systems. So they are used by only advanced professionals. So in the unsupervised learning, we have two again two models. One is clustering, and the other one is. Dimensionality induction. What is clustering? Clustering means, uh, for example, we have uh, in our some suppose we are studying new survey. Okay, so we have divisions, division A, B, C, D. All these are called as structure. So division A is a cluster, division B is a cluster, C and D are the separate clusters. So in the city planning, for for example, we are planning a city. In the city, we we will be having a theaters. Coffee shops, buildings, uh, vegetable stores. These are called as clusters, separate group of the things. So, in the recommended system, for example, uh, we watch a lot of movies, series. So, for example, uh, person is watching Netflix. So, his activity got spread, and the system, Netflix system, will recommend him the type of series he watch, the type of movies he watch. It is it uh, thriller, crime, comedy, or different sets of classifications. These are called as clusters. And in the dimensionality direction, we we'll get two types. For example, text mining and text mining. Dimensionality means we have set of corners in which it generates a certain type of dimension shape of figure. So, for example, if we Face recognition example. So in our case, we have lots of dots connecting each other, and it so it gains the face of face of diamond type. So this dimensional reduction means it will connect the dots in a certain figure, and it will develop a diamond type shape, and it will give us a certain amount of image that we can call it as dimensional reduction. So this is the whole. So that was that we are going to study, but it is very vast. So we can we will try to cover at least as topics we can. And the rest of the topics can be shared with you, the resource materials, and you can study it later. So we will try to cover the topics as much as we can possible. So I would uh, like to share this this complete mind map. If you can take a screenshot of it, you can. Or else I I can share it with you later. So would you like to take a screenshot of it?
take it off one by one. Take, first, take it by data science, okay, and then take it by machine learning. Yes, you can take it now if you want. And now you can take it for machine learning also. So have you taken everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, done. So first of all, we will start with the data science part because data science is very essential in order to study the machine learning part. So as we are going to study in Python, so first we will start with the basics. So uh, it will be very refreshing part for all of you those who know already it, and then we will start with the library itself. So I have developed a folder for you in order to study. So in the core structure of the basic parts, we are going to study this step. So for example, in the basic concepts, we are going to study the syntax of it. So how it is work, how the structure would be, and the variable. You might know the variable. Uh, can anyone tell me about the variable? What is it? Uh, variables, the identifiers, uh, where we are storing uh, some value. Yes, absolutely. And then we will find the keywords, the identifiers, the types. And in the second part, we will study about the list, tuple, dictionary, and set. So all these are data structures of Python itself. We also have stack, queue, that are for C and Java language. But for the Python language, we only have four data types. And in the control structure, we will study about the if, else, or loop, while if. If else means if a condition is true, then it will follow a certain steps. And if the condition is false, then it will follow another certain step. So, so we will start with the basic steps, OK? So from the basics we have, in Python we have certain amount of inbuilt functions. Functions are, function means you can repeat the certain amount of code unlimited times. So for example, if you have to write a equal to 10, b equal to 10, c equal to some kind of 10. So if you want this piece of code in, in your further program again, you can't write again and again a equal to 10, b equal to 10. For that we you will define a function, once, once it is written, you can use it multiple times. You don't have to write again and again the same code. That you can use. How this is work? Print function. The print function used to print a certain statement in the display of the console. So for example, if you write this print function, this is string, and it will again display the string, and a plus b. Which is the value of the two variables. So a is 10, b is 20. The sum of this becomes 30. So for example, if you if I want to input function, input function what it does, it will take an input from you as a user and it will again use for further calculation. For example, if I write 5, then it will return me again 5 because it is my variable. So again. If we write any other number four, we will have any. So now we will start with the hand zone. For example, if we take someone's name here, uh, let's take Miguel okay, as a variable and we'll take his case. So for example, he is 21, 21, 
types of use. We will take some one others. So for example, if we take motion and these are different things for example. So these are two numbers, which means this is an integer for that. So what this statement shows us that Nikhil is of 21 years and Roshan is of 20 years. So for example, if we write a print statement. So just be careful, you have to write all the letters in the small space. Then it will, uh, it will highlight you the print statement. So if we add these two numbers, so uh, we will write a statement for it. For example, if we write uh, friends, H. If I friends H. And if you want to display the addition of them, you have to give a comma after the statement. So we will type nickel plus notion. Now once we type enter, it will display the edge, the addition of two edges, 41 edges. This is just an example how we can do. For example, if we want to give some another letters, so we will get this. So you can modify your statement as you can. For example, if we take another example, uh, we all watch cricket, so we'll take example of it. So we will write what it. And the uh, is partnership. So for example, we have to calculate about, about the partnerships for the first video. So we will add what which has scored if we scored 106 and if she could score 110. So this is the example that we can that we will relate to each other and we can learn like this. So because uh, here we can see that A is equal to 10 B is equal to this doesn't make any sense. It, it might find some for someone difficult. But if then if we if we can study like this, taking the reference of some persons, then we can study very effectively. For example, if I type first, we get partnership. So if I press enter, then you can see the first wicket partnership is 260. So the, in this way, you have to learn so that you will get interest in it, then you can get both. This is about the print statement. And the other points that we are going to discuss is that the other topics are variables, variables, keywords, identifiers, paradigms, comments, and notations. So for example, we are going to display that x is equal to 5. So it means it is an integer value, and this statement with hash defines the comment. So, for example, if I write um, my name, it will come in under comment. If I remove this and if I press enter, it will show me the error that is invariant syntax, which means this this statement doesn't mean anything. So, in order to make it Commit, we have to enter hash. So now I press enter, it gets completely worked. So, in order to add a de uh, definition for the statement, we have to write the commit. So, for example, I write z equal to name. What is it? As it doesn't know. So, in order to define this, we have to write a commit. It is a string value. String variable. It means the z is a string variable. For example, x y is equal to 2, what is it? What is 2? I didn't get anything. So in order to define the statement, we have to write a comment. That is, it is a Boolean expression. Boolean means true or false. Booleans only have two values, true or false. String value, which means it has a certain amount of characters in it. Float variable, which means it has a decimal point between them. So for example, if I write 
one group five. It is not a if you know float value, it is an integer value. If I enter a decimal, it becomes a float value. So we have to define it. So for example, uh, if you want to return the data above it, so I will just enter it and then the Type. The type means we will get the data type of it. For example, if I, if I write x, we'll get I can see the error here. So the type of x is not working. We'll figure out later. Sir, only type list number type of x. Type of x. Okay. Type of x we can get. Yes, it is. So type of x which means it is int, which is we can hear we can collect it here from the comment. And from the y, which means we'll get a float. Now if I remove the decimal point, and again we now it becomes integer because we have zero not five. So if I again enter the decimal point, it will again change its data type into float. This kind of Activity you can perform in order to get the desired data types of the statement. Now we will look at the operators. So operators means we can add two variables or we can perform certain operations on two variables in order to get a desired value. So for example, if I want to add these two variables, so I will simply plus them. If I want to subtract them, simply plus minus them. If I want to multiply them, understand statement. So this kind of mathematical operations you can perform on them. So here a divided by b, which is the division of these numbers. But if I want want to get the percentage between them, what will be the modulo? Then I want to use the percentage sign. And if I want to get the square of a number. Then I have to use the. Then I have to use the double star. Just a second, I will plug in the charger. Yes, now to that. So these are the arithmetic options, which means we can perform the, the normal calculation that we perform in our mobile that we can perform here. But if if we want to perform the comparison operators, comparison operators, if this means we have to compare two variables with each other, then we can use the less than greater than sign, equal to sign, not equal to sign, greater than equal to sign. Less than equal to sign, which means we can really get the comparison between the two operators, which is less, which is more. This kind of operators. So when it comes to the logical operators, logical operators has only three types, and or not. And means, so for example, if we run this, which is the third one, so we'll get. Eight five two, which means, for example, a is equal to five, b equal to eight. So why do we get eight here? Because it will calculate the highest number between them. So if we calculate, so if we calculate ten and eight, then we will get again eight here. Why is it so? Because in and we have Boolean expression. For example, if I write here. In the VCD form, eight is equal to eight equal to what? Zero zero one one zero. This kind of expression is, and for this is the example. This is not exact value. And for ten, 
equal to 101010.5. So this is the BCD code of these two numbers. Then it will get add. Then accordingly, each number is greater. That number gets displayed there. So this is when it when when we perform add operation on integers, then it will automatically calculate the BCD code of between two these numbers. We don't use any way. Just it is just for the knowledge purpose. So when it comes to the bitwise operators, bitwise operators have bit and bit or bit not bit ox, R chip, L chip. So they have to read it in computer science. So the, all this, actually, this all the operators, bitwise operators, assignment operators, special operators. Most of them are not in use in the current market standard. It is just for the education purpose for students. So when it comes to the string methods, and um, this this is the method that we use most of the times in uh, data science field and machine learning field. So we will more focus on this so because again we are going to perform a project. These string methods we are going to use multiple times. So for example, if I write a string Python bootcamp, okay. So now this is the string, which means the number one statement. Just to differentiate between the other statements. So for example, if I run, then I get a of zero. This state, this statement is called as a of zero, a of four, a of minus three, and a of minus two. How does this get calculated? So I will have to show it here. So for example, if we took a equal to Now, if I if I write it in, if I type only a, it will return the value of it. So now I want to return the a of a of a of one. Can anyone say what will it get return? Why, sir? Yes, because in Python the notation start with if p equal to zero. Y equal to one, P equal to two, H equal to three, four, five, and accordingly. So this kind of, for example, if I want to, this is this is a kind of email. The address gmail dot com. This is the string that user enter into the uh, Google form. So as a data analyst or a data scientist, you have to. I expect the email, the first, the only the first name of the email, because the second part of the email remains the same for all of the all of the members, all of the users. So if you if you are working as a data analyst, data scientist, you have assigned a work that you have to extract the first name of the email and store it into a database. So how will you do that? Can anyone tell? You only want the first name of the email because the at the rate gmail dot com remains the same for all the users. You only want the first name. You cannot manually do that because it's, it's, it will take lots of time for you. So in order to do that, you have to use string methods. Can anyone tell me how can you use that? Sir, uh, by using the if else statement, uh, we can. Uh... I'll do that, sir. Yes, we can use that, but it will take a large piece of code. So for that, the uh, easy option is that we can use the three methods that you are using here: indexing, slicing, utilizing methods. So for example, this is the indexing method. We are using the indexing method. So in order to extract the first name of the email, we have to use the slicing method. So for example, a A of we will take zero because we want the first name A of zero colon we will take colon till till zero one zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen we will take fourteen because the fourteen the last 
index of the expression gets eliminated. So for example, if I run this, we will get the pattern detected. How does how does this work? So we have to write the zero because we need the first letter itself until the till the end of the first name just before the at the rate. So in at the 14 we have the at the rate. In the 14th place we have the at the rate and in the 13th place we have the P. So if we write the 14th it will exclude the at the rate. For example if I write 13th it will exclude the P1. So it will exclude the P1 it is, we get only C and in the last. So in order to get the full name we have to exclude the at the rate. So in order to do that we have to write 14. So in this way, in the current market standards, this kind of expression is used. So this is very useful in, when you do the uh, hands-on projects. See, this is the slicing method. This is the slicing method. So we, this is the indexing method. This is the slicing method. Slicing means we want a certain part of that string. We want, we want the first name, the last name, the surname. That kind of expressions can be done here. And this expression, this is very interesting expression. So for example, if we copy this and paste it here. So can anyone, can anyone tell me what kind of result we will get here? We will get the reverse string. Yes, absolutely. So we will get the reverse string, the whole string which is the first letter, will get reversed by itself. How this happens? So for example, if we want a certain amount of a part of the string, what we will do? We will start typing 0 colon to the 14th. Right? We want this. But if we want the reverse, then what we will do? We will start from zero, we'll go till the end, which means we will start from the zero and we will go till the end. So for end, we, we, do, we don't have to specify the integer. We only step, we only want to keep it empty. So what, what, did, what this will do, it will automatically go to the end of the letter. So for example, if I press enter, it will take the whole. Here, here itself. So we doesn't specify the end end integer of it because we want the full. We cannot count the number for many times. So for that we can keep it as empty to get the full letter. Now if you want to reverse it, you can again add one semicolon as it is. So what will this read like? It will again the same. It's minus one represent that. Minus one means it will reverse the statement. So for example, if I put minus one, it will reverse the state. I have to run it again. Yes, why the why is the piece coming here? Can anyone tell me? Why the only piece? We want a whole statement in the reverse order, but only, only, only the P is coming here. The reason is that we have included the zero, which means it will only collect the first letter of it. If we remove it, and now it will give us the whole statement. So this kind of errors we get during the practice. So I will provide the whole notebook to you because we have to cover the project also. So the remaining part I will provide to you. This, uh, if you skip the above, above parts, it will be okay. But you have to study the string methods because it is used in the daily standards. So these are the basic concepts. When it comes to the data structures, So when it comes to success, we, we have 
list and list methods stay native. When we use those uh, string indexing, string slash u, string u plus method, same will be done in the list indexing, this slash u and u plus methods. Same structure can be done. For example, there is a string and it gets it gets converted into a list. We can convert it into a list using the list function and using the brackets. So for example, the same statement has been applied here, L of zero, which means the P letter will come, which means here you can see the P letter, and the L of four, which means the O letter will come. Same operations that we have performed here have been viewed in the string, string methods. And when it comes to a tuple, uh, can you tell me the difference between tuple and a list? Tuple is immutable and lists are mutable. Yes, uh, can you explain it more? We can change or replace the elements in the list, but we can't do it in tuple. Yes, absolutely. So for example, for example uh, here it is, if we want to modify the list, we can do that. But if we want to modify the tuple, we cannot do that. For example, uh, in the end, I will take it. So for example, I will type division, say for example. And in the division here, there are uh, 40 roll numbers for it. So we will take a tuple here because from roll number 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and so on, we cannot change it. If we get to the 40 number, we cannot change it because the roll numbers are fixed. Because the roll numbers are fixed, we cannot change it. If, if I want to modify the tuple, I cannot do that. But if I Take a list and then write the similar roll numbers here itself. Now I can modify it. So, uh, in order to do that, we will see the list methods. So, in order to add or delete in the list, we have append statement. So, if I do it here now, so in the division. A dot append. I will have to add the sixth row number. I have to run this. Now it is append. So now if I write division A, so what what we will get? Does the sixth element added in the row number or not? Let's check. So it gets added in the roll number, in the list. To we'll change this number, it gets it get confused. So we will add to the B statement. So now if we run this, and again run this. Now we can see the system element is added. Now if we in the same in the first division that is a region and it will show the error that tuple object has no attribute append which means tuple is the opposite piece of function doesn't have the append attribute which means we cannot modify it so for example if you want to perform operations on tuple we cannot do that and if you want to perform the operations, then we can do that in the list. So this is the basic equation and the most important difference between the two. So these are the uh, another methods which is packing and unpacking, which means 
backing is so for example we want to add a data in a list so what we do we will send or we want to delete it we do extend remove delete there are very various methods we have so we have a field in order to add extend with, which means we have to add one or two elements more than one element then we can do with extend we cannot do with append we want to insert insert what does the insert do if we append uh, data it will add to the end of the list and if we insert it will add to the certain position of the list for example if i want to add a letter in the second or third position we cannot do with the append statement we can do only with the insert statement so this kind of methods we can use in the list and similarly in order to add data in the tuple we use packing packing loop it, it packs the data in the tuple when packing this will remove the data from the tuple this kind of operations we can perform in list and tuple so when it comes to data analysis projects mostly we use list tuple string and the methods that we have seen here set and dictionary don't use much for example if we say dictionary so if we want to create a dictionary we can use the dict dict function or else we can directly do it using the curly braces that we are using here here we are using the curly braces to in order to create the dictionary we can use both methods so for example in the first method we use the function and in order to define because in the dictionary we have column and rows column and rows so in column we have to define in this manner d is equal to dictionary and the t thing which means the column of the dictionary and the value is is in capitals and uh, I, i want to create a dictionary which has the t name and its capital name so for example if i run this then we will get the t is in capitals capital is in similarly for other things we can do t is uh series of against captain is ms zone so like this we have we can create a, a data set or we can create a data frame for a certain for a certain expression so for example if i want to get only the column names so how can we get we can get with the this expression so this this expression can tell us that team which means we can get only the team name from here it will be the key and value pair key means the column name and value means the the values that are present in the column so for example if i get the team it means it will get the keys team all the things that you get is the keys and the team captains are the values so for example if i get the captain is that the value so in dictionary we have two pairs key and value pair key means the team names value means the captain names so this kind of relation we can see in the dictionary So now we have revised the most of the basic concepts here. So most of the concepts are done. So we will go with the libraries. Will it be okay if we start the libraries? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Other ones? Is it black? Yes, my word. Abhish, yes. Is it okay? If we start the libraries. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. So I will provide all the notebooks here itself, and you can revise it at your own space. So here are certain libraries that I have created. For example, for we have we are going to study the starting four libraries: NumPy, Panda, Matplotlib, and C1. And the rest of the libraries can be learned later because in order to start the journey, we want to study the like, these four libraries.
Okay, so can anyone tell me what, uh, the NumPy meaning and its definition? Yes. Okay, so have uh, has anyone started using this libraries, or it's the first time that you are using this? First time. Okay, okay, no problem. So NumPy is, is the library that we use for the calculations of numbers. So we can do with list, tuple, string. We can do that, but NumPy is one of the fastest library in order to perform the operation between the numbers. So in order to import NumPy, we have to use a statement. So import, it will take few seconds and it gets imported quickly. So import NumPy as NP. What is NP? Because for example, uh, if I want to start using this library, I have to again name this library as NumPy, NumPy, NumPy. So in order to uh, avoid that, we can use a short form for it, NP, as NP. So for example, if I use uh, NY, for example, so I can use that, I can NY. It means it gets shows that it is a NumPy module, NY. If I write NP here, NP, You can again because we have we have used here itself as NP, so it shows me that. So we, for the uh, standard purpose, we will use NP. So now, uh, you you might have studied about the arrays, arrays in the C or C plus plus Java language. In Python, we don't have arrays. In Python, we have a list. List and arrays are somewhat similar, but there are very slight difference between them. That list starts from zero indexing and array start from first indexing. So this kind of uh, minor changes are there. So in order to use array in Python, we can use NumPy because in uh, general Python, we don't have arrays. We only have list, tuple, dictionary, and set. So in, in order to use array, for, uh, so, uh, for example, if, if we go on hacker rank, hacker earth platform, there we can see arrays problems, trace problems, different types of problems. So, if we want to attempt the problems in Python language, you cannot you cannot use this pair. You have to use array itself. So, in order to create an array, the simple statement is np dot array and your list. This is the list. From one to five, you have to provide a list. For example, in list in general Python, we have to provide only one element when it comes to append and insert. But in array, we have to provide the whole list, complete list into the function. So this is the one D array. One D means only the one dimension. So in Python, we are using only one D array, general Python within list and array. So if you want to perform two D arrays, then we can use arrays. We can use numpy here. So in the two D function, we have row and column. So we have to provide two list in the function. Here it is two list in the function with rows and columns. So if we run this, we can find that the A is here, which is the our normal list, and this is the two D list. Has the which has the rows and columns in it. Why this are used? Because we have studied in algebra matrices and all those stuff that we used in matrices. So because when it comes to machine learning, matrices are very important there. Because we have to, for example, if we want to, if we want to analyze the image, dog's image or cat image. So we have to find the coordinates between them. In order, in order to find the coordinates, we use matrices there. We define a certain coordinate, a certain value. 
So this can be done using matrices, and matrices can be created using NumPy. When it comes to arrange, arrange function means uh, it will generate, it will generate a list from starting point to the end point. We only have to assign the starting point and the end point. It will automatically generate the between values of them. Because for uh, we we might have hundreds of two hundred rows columns, and we cannot try to one to hundred annually. We have to use arrange so that it will start from the first element. And ends at the end the end element. But you, you can see you can see here the end element is twelve, but the list is only at eleven, which means the twelfth element get excluded. We have to remember that the first element that we specify gets included, but the last element that we assign gets excluded. This is the basic difference between the array. And in the second. We can use the same statement, but with the two. What it means: the first position, which means the starting position; second position, which means the end element; and the third position, which means the difference between them. For example, if I write one to ten with the difference of two, I get the, all the odd numbers. So, for example, if I want to create the odd numbers list, I will use this, this expression. So, I will get one. Three, five, seven, and four elements. This is a this is a four elements. And now, if I write here one, I will get from one to nine. And if I write here three, I will get only one for seven. This is the difference between them. Add three. This kind of functions we can do here. So I will continue with two itself. So the simple difference between the between the array and array is that in the array we can define the list in the manual order, and in the array we can define the list using the first element and the last element. This is the only basic difference between them. When it comes to zeros, these are all functions in the numpy. Okay. So for example, this is array and p dot array, which means The function in p dot array. And again, when it comes to arrange, it means in p dot arrange. It's all the functions we use here. And when it comes to zeros, which means the in p dot zeros. Zeros, what will create? It will create a matrix for you, which contains only zeros in it. It doesn't contain any another value except zero. So all the elements in the matrix is zero. When it comes to the first statement, it be dot zero three. It means I need a row of three columns. This is a single row, and the columns are three. Which means I need three columns. If I create three by three, it means I need three columns and three rows. So here we can see that it is three rows and and three columns. In the first, it is only three columns, only one row. Which means, if I specify the number in here, if I write five, it will give me the five rows, no five columns, only one row. And if I write four by four, it will give me four rows and four columns. And the last statement is n p zero five, which means I need five zeros again. This for this A statement, this A statement and the C statement are same. This the only difference is the C statement has integer value, while the A statement also has integer value. But we have specified here that we only want integer values in the C statement, and in the A statement it can vary. It might have float value, integer value, but in the C statement we only want integer value. We don't want decimal values. This kind of functions we can use. When it comes to ones, it is just opposite of zeros. If we want zeros in the whole matrices, it will give us the zeros. But if we if we want ones, then it will create the only ones in the matrices. 
it doesn't hold any other value except one. Same function is here for if I want four columns, only one row, and if I want two by three matrices, which means I want two rows. There are only two rows and three columns. These matrices are very important because the further projects they are going to do is only on this matrices numpy pandas. So this is line space. Line space means you create an array from one. Now here we have defined starting position is one and the last position is 50. So it will create till 49. Okay, the last 50 element is excluded. It will create only from 1 to 49. And the num, the parameter num is 50, which means in, including 50 elements, which means it will create 1 to 50, only 50 elements. So for example, from 1 to 50, how many elements are there? There are 49 elements. So from them, 49 elements it will create only 15 elements, random 15 elements. For example, here you can see that the first statement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Only 15 numbers. So, for example, if you want a data set but you don't have the values, you can create a random data set including uh, random values. So, for that, we can use this line space function. So, in, in order to practice, uh, practice the dummy data, you can create this random data set in order to perform analysis. So you, you don't need to search for data, search for data set Excel files, CSV files. You can create on your own from your random data. If you want 20 elements, you can create 20. You can create 20 elements from here. So this includes 20 elements. So currently I will limit it to 15 elements. So here it has two different If you want more, you can use it. If you want less, you can use it. So in the B statement, it specifies that the starting element will be two, the end element will be 80, which means it will include till 79. And num is 10, which means I want only 10 elements. And step, uh, right step is two, which means it means for example, in the first, in the first statement, we have 15 elements, but it is random. We have one, then four. The difference is three approx. And we have eight. Again, same, again, same, again, same. But from here, it gets differentiated. So, from in, with this statement, the difference between them remains constant. For example, now here you can see that. Now, this is the, this is the statement two. 10, 10, which means 8 is a different. Again, 19, which means across 8 is a different. 28, again, 8 is a different. The difference between them is similar. It doesn't uh, contain the random values. It has the random values, but with the uh, same interval. Now, this statement again works the same as we discussed. It has 50 in the end and 1 in the start. Which means endpoint calls. Endpoint call means this is the commit array from 1 to 50 without 50. If it doesn't include that, it will again exclude the 50 itself. But just to get for the knowledge purpose, we have included this endpoint equal to false. If I write endpoint equal to true, then it will, the statement will modify as this the array from 1 to 50 with 50. But currently we have endpoint as false. So Without that. So this is the function that we use. But it is not, it is uh, difficult to cover all the functions. So I will provide the link of this and then you can study accordingly because it is very huge function. The basics, did you understand the basics? Do I have to repeat any part? Understood. Others? Understood. Yes, sir, understood. Nishika? Are you sure? Yes, sir. I can repeat if you want. 
because it is very huge. So I can, if you have any doubts while reading this, just post the message into the group. I will reply it there as well. Because in three hours we cannot complete whole levels, so I will provide this notebook to you. So now we will start the pandas. So from here, pandas, the same statement we can use here for which we have used in NumPy, import pandas as PD. We have used PD because it's a, a very familiar word for the short form because we cannot use pandas, pandas, pandas for the multiple times. So in order to reduce that, we have used short form as PD. So if you want to, Check the version of the pandas. You can do here. What is your version, latest version? So it will take few seconds and it will get it imported into the network. Then, so in pandas, we have two major uh, data frames, data types, which are series and data frame. These are two. First, we have the series one, and then so then we have the data frame. Data frame means it will create a Excel file, which means which have rows, columns, uh, the data set in which we have rows and columns is called as data frame. This is the basic basic definition of it. And if we want only one row, one column, then we can call it as series. It has only one row and one column. If you want multiple column, multiple rows, you can create a data frame here. So when it comes to series, it is it is as simple as list. If we create a list, then you, you have created a series. If you know how to create a list, then you know how to create a series. Similar to that, if you create a series, if you create a series here, can you know these elements which are, these are integer elements, these are negative elements, this is a string element. So we have printed the list, the list is here, we have printed, and then we have added it to a series. For example, we know if we want to, if we want to implement a function, then we have to use pd.series. As we use in numpy in p dot array in p dot range. In a similar way, we have used pd dot series. And we have provided a list in, which means again the same element. So for example, if I if I run this first, then I can see the list is here. So if I copy this, and if I provide the same list in itself. So I the same list here itself. And now uh, just see the different for it. We have a single row and single column. And if I press enter, then it is it has a single row, single column as it is. It doesn't show any difference between them. So in order to reduce the manual uh, stacking, we have included the this a variable just to reduce the manual stacking. That's all the things are same. You can see the same difference. Same elements are here, no differences. So, the same a similar kind of implementation has been done. List to again the same elements. And again, very series. List one index, which means the which means the serial number of them. For example, here you can see the serial number is here the serial number is. Uh, 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the left hand corner. The serial number, this is a serial number. But if you want your customized serial number, then you can use the index parameter. Here you can provide the, provide the index A, B, C, D. For example, here in the second list, you can see the left hand corner side, the index changes. 
serial number thing is A, B, C, D. You can change to your own record. In the third list, the first parameter is same, index is same, but we are going to do the name equal to info, which means we have defined a certain name for a series. For example, here you can see data object, the, the type is object. Here you can see data is object as well, but we have name equal to info, which means this series has a certain name, which means info. This is, this, is, this is just for our knowledge purpose. We cannot use, we doesn't use this more. We use this. This, this technique has been used more times. The name info, it doesn't use more. And in the last, in the last statement, we have seen the dictionary type because we have seen in the dictionary we have rows and columns, keys and fields. Key is a row and values is a, a key is a column, values is a row. So here we, you can see similar kind of implementation has been made. A is a key, one is value, B is key, C, uh, B, two is value, C is key, and three is value, which means this is very why does we use this? Because in this theory, we have rows and columns. Similarly, in series, we also have rows and columns. So wherever we have rows and columns, we can use either list, dictionary, series, any one of them. As, as per your convenience, you can use any one. And now the data frame. Data frame is the 2D dimension. The series is 1D dimensional and data frame is 2D. It can have two rows, two columns, three rows, three columns, many more. But in series, it can only have one row and one column. So in the data frame, you can, you can see the same structure, pd dot data frame, as we use in numpy, np dot array, np dot zeros, np dot forms, same pd dot data frame. This is the basic function that we use always. Now we have included b, which is which is a variable in which we have a list. So in the data frame, we have passed the list. As I showed you earlier, we can also pass the complete list. So this complete list, we can also pass here itself. But, but to reduce the manual timing, we have directly written the variable b. So df, why we use df? Because again the short form of the data frame, because uh, we cannot write data, data frame multiple times. So we use the short form to represent it as a df. And again, as I said, we have data frame with multiple rows and multiple columns, which means we again have keys and pairs. So again, we can create it with this, this manner, key, which is the row ID, Values which, which means the rows again, number and O, which means the key again, the values again, the column and again, the value. Same mechanism we can use here. So, here you can see that the last last statement this is the one column, the last statement ID, which is the key, one, two, three, four is the value. And O is the key, 10, 20, 30, 40 is the value, similar to H, the value. Now we have seen the basic data types of the pandas, but uh, we can use that when, so for example, if you don't have a Excel file, CSV file, data set, in that manner, you can use the data frame to create your own data set, your own values, and series for your own own data set. If you don't have a data set, but if you have a data set, and if you want to work on the file Excel file that you have, then you have to work on the different way. So this is the read CSV, which means you can read a CSV and this is a file. So for example, if I run this, then the column doesn't show. The file doesn't show, which means I have a major data file which I get from the internet. In this we have a weather data, which means the temperature, the wind speed, the visibility, and the weather which is 
snow weather fog weather different types of weather so now i have go at the csv file into the notebook the statement which are you busy using is pd.csv again is the function that we use similar to numpy pd.csv and the file name which we are using so i have run this now i want to i want to display the data set so in our display you can use the variable name df which means you get the all rows here but i don't want the all rows so i will get only few rows so if you want few rows to visible then you can use dot head option and how many rows you want to use i want five rows so i will enter five which means i will get only five rows just to view the data frame data set how it looks if you want all rows then you can simply type df This is the starting five rows of the data set. Now, now if you want to view the ending five rows, the last five rows. So the number remains the same, but the head becomes ten, which is the head five rows. Which is you, you can see the serial number eight thousand seven hundred eighty three, and in the reverse order, this is the ending five rows and. And this is the starting value, zero, one, two, three, four. So in this manner, you can view the heading part and the ending part of the data set. Now I want to work on this data. How can I work? So this read CSV is used just to view the data set. It doesn't allow us to work on the data set. So I want to work on the data set. So in order to work, we use Right CSV. So the similar way we have used to read read the file. In order to write, first we have to read. So once we read, yes, it is visible to us. We can read. Now we can proceed to the next part. So here you can see the CSV file name, and the second parameter is use calls, which means I want to only use limited columns. And we can see here. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Total eight columns we have, but some of them are useless. We have to remove it because some of them are not not relevant. But in this case, all the columns are relevant. But in the other cases, for example, if we have the day, day time, or the holiday time, so we don't want holidays. Why we want? So we can remove it. So these columns we need, but here we can use use columns four, five, three, which means zero, one, two, three, four. Wind speed, yes, wind speed is visible. Five, this is eighty kilometers. Yes, it is there. And six degrees pressure, and pressure is also there. Weather part is not there. Date is not there. Temperature is not there. And dew point is not there. And the relevancy, the weight is not there. So first we have to work on these three. These three columns, and then we can work for the further columns. So, if you want to work in the limited columns, then you can you can use use calls. Use calls allows you to work on the limited columns that you want. Again, it shows the whole column. I don't want the whole column. I want only the heading part. So, I will use head, and I want only five columns. This will this will show me only five columns of wind, visible, visibility, and pressure only five columns. Just to view the data frame. Now here you can see the next part. We have used index column as time and date and time. What is this index part? It means for in the earlier data frame. Here we don't have any index column. For example, if we view in the here, if we view here in the earlier part, we have specified index as A, B, C, D, E. Which means this is our reference point. If we type A in our data frame, we can get the value of it, which is one. If we type B, we can get the value of 
minus 4. So this kind of indexing we have not done in the current current data set. So we have to do that. In order to take a reference, because here we can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the default index. We want we don't want that. We want our customized index. So in order to do that, we have done index column as date time. Date and time, which means here the, the date and time column gets highlighted bold and in the earlier part it, it was the normal font of others but here we can see it is folded which means if we type the first of January 2012 at 6, 6 o'clock we will get this whole row because we have a reference here this is a reference to remember in the earlier part we doesn't have any reference we are here, we have, which is a default, but we, this doesn't look good for the users. So in order to make it customized, we can use index column. And again, I want, I don't want the whole column, whole data set, I want only the head. Yes, this is the index, this is the index column, which can be used for the reference for it. If I want more than 5, I can use 10, which shows you the 10 rows, but for now, I will continue with 5 itself. Now, once the index column is defined and we have included only few columns, to, we have included only few columns, only wind speed. Only when speed, we have to live in speed, variability, and pressure. And now we can see here that all of them have the single reference point, which is date and time. Now we can work further. Here we can see that similar data set is included, and the header is one, which means This is the column, temperature, dew point, all these are columns which are highlighted in the bold form. But here, if I want, if I want different column, I don't want this temperature, wind speed, visibility, I don't want this weather as a column. I want this minus 1.83, 3.9, 4. I want this row as a column, so I, I have written header equal to 1. Why 1? Because this, the upper part is zero, at a zero index, and the lower part is at one index, zero, one, two, three, four, five. In, in this manner it works. So if I write one, which means I get the first row of the data set. So the first row of the data set gets highlighted here, which means now this is my row. It is just for the implementation purpose. We cannot use this as a row. We have to use zero, as a row, which means we again have similar. Here we have a default columns as it is, and here we have used header equal to zero, which means I need the zero index as my columns. And again, I want the head of it, not the whole data set. I will use only five. And now, if I choose here to write two, which means the zero, one, two, which means the Second row of the data set becomes the header. Here you can see that. Here you can see that the second row becomes the header. But it is of no use, so I will type the default value as zero. So the default value is zero, which means I have the already defined columns as my columns as of now. So this is this is just for the clean cleaning purpose. For example, if I don't have columns here, if I have columns over here in the third part. So I can use this header parameter to again define my header. Now the next part is first of all I will reduce it to five columns only. 
Now, header is none which means I don't want header in any other. So I will define header equal to my prefix equal to column, which means I want my own column, my customized column. I don't want any default column. So which means I will set the header equal to none, which means I don't have any column, and prefix equal to column, which means this is my customized column, column one, column two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will automatically increment its value as the column progresses. So this is your this is your customized column because if you don't want the default column, but here we want our default column because this column four by seven it doesn't make any sense to us. So we will use our default default column. Now here, if you want again your customized names to the column, you can again use here names equal to your design names. So here A B C D E F. This now this is your column A B C D E F, and date, time, temperature, speed, speed, all these are your rules. These are not your columns now, because you have modified it here. So these are just the knowledge purpose, because we want a default column as it is. Again, I will re reduce it to L. Now, actually, it is a very fast topic. You can see here it has multiple topics. If we do that now, we cannot complete a project, which is your project assignment that we have to allocate. It. So I will provide this as well because we have to finish the machine learning and project assignment as well. So I will provide this to you. You can study this, but I guess you have, you might have uh, known the basic concepts of Panda as well. Did you? Yes. Yes, sir. Others? Yes, sir. I guess yeah, I guess couple of students have joined now. Amay, Amay, and Akamsha. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so we will conclude the panel part here, and we have to complete the project as well. So we will take five minutes break, and then we will come back. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sure. So we will meet at eleven uh, fifty. Okay. okay, sir.